Welcome again everybody. Looking at uh, basically effects and blending modes and other features of the layers palette uh, that we can use to our advantage uh, especially when editing photos. I've brought up a 6 by 9 inch 300 uh, pixels per inch canvas here uh, that we're going to be working in. You'll notice it is checkered. That's because the background is transparent. There's nothing there. Uh, whenever a whenever there's transparency uh, that's reflected in Photoshop by showing this gray and white checkered board. Uh, what I'm going to do in order to bring my photo in is I'm going to go up to File and Place Embedded. Uh, the difference between placing embedded and linked means that if I embed the picture in this PSD file, this Photoshop file, and then I move that Photoshop file elsewhere, the picture comes with it. If the file is linked, then and I, then I move the PSD file the file does not come with it. So what it does is it keeps your file sizes down but at the same time it kinda hurts you in terms of flexibility so be aware of which one you're using. I recommend generally just using place embedded. So I'm gonna do place embedded now. I'm gonna pull down a stock photo and we're gonna be looking at a theoretical uh, we'll say we're working on a book cover or something since this is six by nine inches. Now when I bring it in you'll notice immediately that it has an X across the middle. That's because whenever you place a file it does not automatically confirm that you have to do that yourself. So essentially I can still delete this out without ever confirming the placement if I was unhappy with it or if I clicked the wrong file so on and so forth. And it's just easy to do that way. But I am happy with this one so I'm going to go up to the top where we have this check mark. I could also go back to my arrow. Remember that's always your default position. But I'll go up and hit the check mark to confirm the placement. Now if you look at this over in the layers palette, you'll notice that it gives it the name of the image, so I'm going to go ahead and change that just by double clicking and naming that to main image. And then it also has this little icon here in the corner of the, I'm trying to think of a good word for it, for the thumbnail, for the little thumbnail that it shows in the layers palette, there's an icon in the corner. What that means is this is not yet rasterized. So if I was to try just for example, uh, to take my paintbrush and try to paint on this, it's going to tell me that I have to rasterize the layer first. Whenever you place something, it has to be rasterized before you can actually affect that layer uh, directly. Essentially, when you have an editing program like this, you have destructive and non-destructive editing. So, destructive editing means you change the file itself that you change the actual photo. Non-destructive means that you don't. You can't do any form of destructive editing, erasing, uh, coloring directly on that layer unless it is rasterized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control click on the name of the image uh, in the layers palette. It's control click on Mac. It's actually right click on PC depending on whichever you're using. And I'm going to go up to where it says rasterize layer. Now it is important to mention that you you control click on the name rather than on the icon because those do two different things. So if I right click on that, thumbnail is a better word, then it's going to give me a different set of things to do. So I want to make sure I uh, control click on the name and rasterize layer. Now you notice the icon is gone. It's no longer there. And now I can take my brush and draw directly on this if I want to. Obviously it's not particularly attractive. Alright, the next thing that I want to look at is using adjustment layers, opacity, and blending modes together. This is something you're going to do for all of the photo projects that you do. So if I go down to the bottom of the layers palette here, you'll see this series of buttons I drew attention to in the last video. Uh, the one we used then was create a new layer. What I'm going to do now is go to this one that is a circle that's split in half, and it says create new fill or adjustment layer if I hover over it. And this gives me a lot of different options, things that I can do. For example, I'll throw in a curves layer, which we'll look at in detail later. And you'll notice it creates a new layer above the image. What that does is it affects every layer beneath it. If there's something above it, it won't be affected. It affects every layer beneath it. And I can treat this just like a normal layer and move it around in the layers palette. But then what I can do is we're just going to do this theoretically here. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time messing with it. I'll just make a small change uh, to soften up the blacks a little bit. 
And now that I've done that, I can toggle it on and off. And again, it will affect anything I put beneath it. So any other layers that I put in there, it will affect as long as it is beneath that curves layer. Now this is non-destructive. It doesn't actually affect it uh, permanently. I can delete this out if I want to, or I can just toggle it on and off. So, but that's the best way to affect something like this. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is... I'm going to bring that same button down at the bottom of the layers palette, bring in a solid color. And I'm going to go with something very strong orange like this. Now, whenever you bring in a solid color, it fills your entire canvas. That's what it does. Uh, you can always change the color by double clicking on the thumbnail and then just choosing something else. But I'm going with an orange. And what I'm going to do with this is actually change the blending mode of this layer, which is fairly complex, but basically it just deals with how that layer interacts with the other layers in the palette. So, for example, right here above it, we have a drop down. It's actually dropping up in this situation. And I'm going to go through and choose one of these. Typically, trial and error is good uh, for figuring out which of these you want to actually use. But I'm going to choose Overlay because I know that that's one that works for my purposes. So I'm going to click Overlay, and you'll see that suddenly it pushes down over the image and actually gives an effect rather than just covering the entire thing. Now the second thing we're going to adjust here uh, from blending mode is opacity. We have the opacity of the layer right here next to the blending mode drop down. And if I click that and I have this layer selected, I can actually drop down the opacity of that orange block and it gives me just a warm image. See I can now toggle this off and on and you can see the difference that it makes. Blending modes are extremely important. You use them not just for this. This is a fairly rudimentary change to make. But you can use them for a wide variety of things. Even, say for example, my curves layer, I can lower the opacity of that as well. You can also work with additional images. But just knowing that these are here, blending modes and opacity. And each one is different for each layer. So as I click through, you can see the opacity toggling as well as the blending modes. It only changes the layer that you have selected. So whenever you need to make a change like that, whenever you need an effect, make sure you have the correct layer selected that you're actually wanting to change.